Hi, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I want to tell you today about a really interesting update about protecting yourself from COVID-19, which is all really any of us want to talk about, but I think you'll find this research really fascinating. And it has to do with melatonin. So melatonin is our sleep hormone. It tends to come up in darkness and while we're asleep and at uh, different ages, we have uh, differing amounts. Um, infants can tend to have a very high amount. Just to give you sort of reference ranges, um, the measurement they're talking about is picograms per milliliter, which is, which is a very small amount, but just we'll just focus on, on the numbers right now. So uh, children ages one through five, have a level of 325, but then from 5 to 11 it drops, like 133. Uh, these are still very healthful ranges, but then over 75 you're down to the 20s, like around 27, 28. So you see there's a huge drop in there. And statistically we've always known that melatonin is a great uh, immune fighter, it's anti-cancer, it just basically uh, helps amplify and, and implement your immune system's ability to fight everything. So we've always talked about that, hence the importance of sleep. And when people miss sleep, their immune systems are weaker. And we've been talking about that, but check this out as a very specific to our not so good friend, COVID-19. And that is that uh, part of the virus is uh, something called NL RP3. So this is what's called an inflammasome. So just think of inflammation. So what it does is um, it's part of an inflammasome is part of your immune system, which creates a highly inflammatory response. But this NLRP3 specifically incites inflammation in the to a respiratory distress, which of course is what COVID-19, that's where it tends to attack primarily is are your lungs. And so it, it enhances respiratory distress and, and diminishes the oxygen in your system. So that's that. That's the tie between COVID-19 and this particular inflammasome. So what they found is that melatonin targets this bad guy, instead of me saying NLRP3 for the next five minutes, let's just call it the bad guy. And so melatonin targets it and uh, basically restricts it. And so if you have adequate amounts of melatonin, what they're finding is that it really takes the infectiousness or how you know infectious and, and how um, damaging COVID-19 is way down. So check this out. In, um, in China, in the hospital uh, where, of course, this initially began, what they found was in Wuhan, none of the pregnant mothers and none of their newborns got very ill. Now, we've, we've kind of known for a while that children seem to be um, pretty you know, they weather this very, very easily. It's not that they're immune, but they get it so mildly, it's almost like you can't even tell that they have it. And it's been a question as to why, why would that be? So now they're making this association that not only do newborns have very high melatonin, which is inhibi inhibiting our bad guy, our inflammasome, but also women in their third trimester tend to have twice as much melatonin as they do at the beginning of their pregnancy. So it's this, protective response that our body has for mommy and therefore baby um, to keep melatonin really high and melatonin is this great immune defender. So isn't that fascinating? I thought that was so interesting. What else did I want to tell you? Um, that was actually the biggest thing. Uh, they just they just uh, released a study March 6th, so just last week, and they looked at um, high melatonin levels preventing ventilators. So somebody's on a ventilator because they're having trouble breathing, uh, re reducing ventilator-induced injuries. So melatonin and lungs, a nice little team here. So you want to make sure that you are... Um, sleeping well, but if you're somebody who has trouble sleeping, melatonin is very, very safe. It's a super safe hormone and it's so protective of your immune system. We've always said that, but now would be a very good time to make sure that you're upping your melatonin. We have a couple of supplements uh, that have melatonin. Um, 
This is from Douglas Laboratories. It's got three milligrams of melatonin, which is a nice dose. Uh, this is a product called Insomnitol, my personal favorite. I never go to sleep without it. Um, this is from uh, Designs for Health, and it's got some calming herbs along with melatonin and theanine, so it's a little combo team, which this body finds very, very good. Um, but you, there's you know, several sources of melatonin. I just wanted to show you a couple that we had on hand. Now, a couple of things to go over with melatonin. Every once in a while, someone says, oh, I had these vivid dreams and you know, with the melatonin. Often that passes. Occasionally, there's a very small percentage of people that, that get more awake on melatonin than they get sleepy. Again, super small percentage, not the end of the world, certainly to try it and see, but again, super small percentage. And then some people say, I took melatonin, I just couldn't wake up the next morning. Probably a little bit less of a problem these days since most of us are stuck at home. Um, but what that's about, just so you know, is that feeling of like, oh, I can't wake up, I feel like I'm drugged, is it shows that you have quite a sleep deficit. So that melatonin is actually wanting you to stay asleep longer because it's trying to um, handle that deficit. So bright light handles melatonin, just go out, look at the sun, look at a bright light in your home. Um, that's a way to turn melatonin off. But don't worry about that feeling of like, oh, I feel like I'm drugged. It's, it's not a bad drugged, and it will pass as your sleep deficit passes. So again, so many people are, are having to stay home or working from home. Now's a nice time to uh, handle your sleep deficit when you're not so uh, worried about getting to work on time. And it's super, super healthy. So I hope you found this fascinating. I certainly did. As I said, this new study that came out um, is just a week old. And there's been a lot of talk about kids don't get it. Thank God, but why? So this gave us a why, and it had to do with your melatonin levels. So um, I hope you're all hanging in there and doing well. Uh, certainly washing your hands and, and keeping your distance from people is very, very wise. Here at Root Cause, as an essential medical clinic, we are open, we are seeing patients, and um, we can see our functional medicine patients uh, over the phone, over Zoom, if they prefer that. Some people are enjoying getting out of the house and we are taking all precautions to the nth degree here. We get our temperatures taken twice a day. Everybody that walks through the door gets a little temporal uh, temperature, so very easy to do, but make sure that nobody comes in who um, has any kind of a fever. And uh, anyway, we're, we're here for you. We wanna give you the best advice and please let us know anything we can do. So give me a call, 408-733-0400.